Hi everyone, today I'm taking a look at Autobahn, which is a 2022 release board game designed by Fabio Lopiano and Nestor Mangone. This one accommodates one to four players and takes one and a half to two hours to play on average. Before I get started on my review of Autobahn, I want to give a shout out to the show sponsor, Kienda. .co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer here in the UK. And if you use my link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. Okay, so Autobahn is gonna look like this when it's set up. And this is kind of halfway through a game here. So we have developed the map somewhat here, but this is the main map of Germany here with all these connecting roads. Um, in the top left-hand corner here, you have this kind of round structure breakdown. So the game is basically broken down into three phases. And at the end of each of those phases, there's gonna be an admin phase. And each phase becomes longer than the last and it's determined by how fast these roads are built. So the first phase will end as soon as 10 roads are built. The second one when 12 roads are built and the third one when 14 roads are built. Now each phase is also going to differ in terms of the value of taking actions or the cost of taking actions. So for example, in the first era to build a single piece of road is gonna cost you six coins, but in the third one, it's gonna cost you 12 coins, but also different things are going to uh, you know vary in price as well. Um, in the top right hand corner here or in the separate board, you have these offices where you are trying to get your workers into to score you end game, end game points. Um, in fact, this is the only way you can score points in the entire game. And below that, you have these different kind of offices or these different councils relating to each color of each autobahn. So whenever you contribute to a certain autobahn, you'll generally put one of your workers here to show that you've done that, which can um, def definitely be important when it comes to getting money during those admin phases and for end game scoring. You have this track here that you're trying to go around and where you, when you hit certain checkpoints, you'll get different bonuses and we'll talk about what they do a bit later. And you've also got your own personal player board that look like this. So generally this is gonna be a bunch of upgrades that you can get. However, when you unlock these things, not only are you going to get the ability on them for the rest of the game, but they'll also allow you to start pursuing the different officers here because these do kind of time with each other and you can't kind of climb up on these different point scoring criteria unless you have the matching blocks unlocked on your player board here. Um, you have these keys which are used to um, unlock these here. You have these little service stations at the bottom, which are important to get out on the board to give you kind of passive income and bonuses as you go. And you've got a couple of these trucks here. One you're gonna start with, the other one you're gonna to have to unlock. And I suppose more importantly, each player person is gonna start with a bunch of action cards. And there's gonna be an action card for each color of Autobahn. So there's gonna be six to start with. However, during the final phase, you're going to unlock the yellow Autobahn and the other card is gonna come into play. Now each player is also gonna get given at random one of these delivery boards, which shows the different goods you're trying to deliver to the different countries and how much money they're gonna offer you if you choose that option. So let's talk quickly about what we're trying to do and then talk about how we actually try to obtain that. So let's go back to the point scoring board here. So essentially these are the different criteria that are going to score you points at the end of the game. So these will essentially give you points based on how many people you have on the benches here. So if you have someone in this office, it's gonna give you a point for each person. In this office, it's gonna be two points per person and this one, three points per person. But you can have multiples in each to really up those multipliers. This one here is gonna give you points based on the different countries that you deliver goods to based on that board that I mentioned earlier. And this one here is gonna give you points based on your different service stations you build. And the final one is gonna be relating to the money that you have left in your supply. Now, how do you actually take actions and what are the actions? So what you do is that with your hand of cards, you're going to select one of them and allocate it to one of these action slots to the top of your player board. And these are the five different main actions you can take. The first one here is to, again, deploy the card and then take one of the keys of the matching color. So bearing in mind, there's only one of each to start with. There are some bonus ones you can get here, but I don't think that's really worth talking about. Um, and you're gonna take that key and put it on one of these bonus actions, which I said will give you bonuses when you do things and allow you to get into those better offices for end game scoring. The, the other ones here are such as building these roads, which is kind of one of the main actions you can take. And bear in mind that all of these different actions have a limit on how many times you can do them. So they're gonna start with um, like mostly doing being able to do it once, but as the game progresses, you can potentially upgrade them to doing it twice and then even three times if you do it the third time. 
But yeah, let's talk about how we build roads. So when you build roads, you are going to have a look at somewhere on the network that's stemming out from an already established place. So for example, um, you know, this, this road was built earlier. What you're going to do is that you're going to have a look at how big that link is between the different cities. So, for example, here between Dortmund and Hanover, there's a two piece road there rather than a single piece like like this one here. And when there's a two piece road, you're going to have a look at this figure for how expensive it's going to be. But for a single piece road, it's going to be slightly more expensive. And then you're going to pay that money. You're going to build the road with a single carriageway, um, because another action is to upgrade it to a dual carriageway, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and when you do that, you're gonna again, pay your money, you're gonna put the road on the board, and then you're also going to put one of your workers on that matching council, like so. So say, um, let's say someone did use this council here, um, they'd put their worker on the farthest right bench and push everyone along and potentially pushing someone off the bench and putting them in this lobby area here, meaning that they'll be ready for promotion later. And anybody at the in the lobby at the end of the game is going to give you two victory points. The second action here is to convert a single carriageway into a dual carriageway. And when you do that, just like any other action, you're going to play a card on that spot. You're going to have a look at the matching autobahn. So this one's the white. You're going to have a look at that white autobahn, find a single piece of carriageway and flip it over to the reverse side like so, paying the cost based on the reference here. Now, something that's important is that when you do upgrade into a dual carriageway, if you have a two piece road, you're gonna to have to do them both at once. That's gonna be quite expensive. You know, in the first phase costing you, you know, 12 or then 14 and then even 16. And much like the standard build action, whenever you upgrade a, um, a carriageway into a dual carriageway, you are going to put your council member or your worker onto one of those matching benches. The next action is to bring the trucks into play. And when you do that, just like any other action, you're going to play a card. And then if your truck is on your player board, you're going to remove it from your player board and put it on one of the good locations on the matching colored autobahn. So this is the yeah, the black autobahn. Therefore, I'd have the choice of you know, Hanover or um, you know Bad Hersfeld or even like um, Krailsheim down here. But let's just say I put it in Hanover like so. Now, when I put it on that on that um, goods location, I'm gonna load my truck with the resource type of the matching location. So for example, this would be the automobiles. I'm gonna put it on my truck like so. And then whenever I play a card, and this relates to any action, not just the, um, the truck action, if that colored cu card matches the location where my truck already is, then I get to move it a number of spaces equal to the round it's on. So in the first round, it's gonna be two spaces, and in the second and third round or phase, it's gonna be three spaces. So again, you're gonna move it piece by piece, moving them along the roads like so. And bearing in mind, you kinda of end on a spot with another piece. Um, and with the idea here is that you're trying to deliver these specific goods to these specific locations. So you can see here that if I delivered a car to France here, then I would be able to take one of these little delivery markers cover up this spot here to show that I've done it, which is important, of course, for this end game scoring, because again, every different country I deliver to is gonna give me points here. But it also means at the start of any future round, I can actually choose to slide this across here, like so, and take the bonus action. And these bonus actions could be things such as going around this track here. It could be things such as getting a replacement card for my deck, getting money, getting an upgrade, and so on. And something worth mentioning is that if you deliver a goods type that doesn't match the country's preferred good here, you get the money instead. However, you can only do that once. And the final action here is to build a service station. And when you do that, it's gonna be free of charge. Of course, you're gonna play a card and then you're going to take the leftmost available service station at the bottom of your player board and free of charge, you are going to place it somewhere on that matching autobahn. So I play the black card, therefore I could put it on this available black service sp station space here. Now these service stations only appear on the double road spaces and not on the single ones like so. And the important thing about these are, again, not only do they correlate to one of the end game scoring criteria, but also it means that whenever anybody drives past your service station, whether that's you or another player, you will get a bonus. Now, if another person drives past your service station, you always get the smallest available coins and value of your revealed, um, you know, of your revealed spots here. So this would be uh, two coins in this example. You know, if I had these spots covered up, it would only be one. However, if I drive past my own service stations, I will get to choose any of the bonuses that I've unlocked yet. So these are a nice way to get some passive income and some passive upgrades. 
Now there are a couple of alternative actions you can take. The first of which is to pick up cards from your player board and put them back into your hand. And each time you do that, for every card that you pick up, you're going to get a coin for. So that's a nice way to get some extra money and to redeploy the cards you've already used. Now, if you've played all of your cards, you're gonna be forced to take them all back. However, you do not get any money if you play through your entire hand. Now, the second alternative option you can take is to deploy one of your workers onto the spot here and get this amount of money. However, you can only do that once per phase. And something else worth mentioning is that at any time during the main action phase, you can cash in one of these bonus tokens that you've collected to take that action. Um, and you're gonna get these bonus tokens in different ways, such as by building on certain locations. Like for example, if you were the first player to build on this part here, then you will get this bonus token added into your hand. And the same applies to making deliveries to the different countries. You'll get to take one of these bonus tokens that are still available. And these bonus tokens do lots of different things, such as you know, getting new cards into your hand. Um, they'll let you kind of shift your action cards around. They'll let you do bonus actions like this, such as you know, building a dual carriageway, moving your truck more, and even like promoting your, um, your workers from the lobby here into the offices. Now, whenever you see this symbol here, you're going to be able to move along this track. And when you land on these certain locations or certain um, icons, you'll take the corresponding action, which again, like promotions, but some of them will be allow you to upgrade the amount of cards you can play on a certain action. So as I said, um, as the game progresses, you can potentially flip these over, play four, you know, four cards on this column, or even five cards, should you wish to do that. And this applies to all the different ones as well. So, you know, you get more freedom to play cards without having to spend time to pick them back into your hand. So we've talked about the actions you're gonna take, but let's talk about what happens when an admin phase is triggered once all the roads of a certain phase have been built. So what will happen is you will have a look at every single autobahn and calculate the numbers here. Now these numbers are gonna be dynamic and they're gonna change as more roads are built. So basically they are going to correspond to the amount of different autobahns that they are connected to and um, to other cities. So for example, uh, this one here, uh, in Krelsheim is connected to a city on the white autobahn and it's also connected to a city on the black autobahn. Now for each time you do that, it's gonna be worth two points. So. That would be a base level of four, but they're also going to get upgraded for every single dual carriageway they're connected to. So therefore that's gonna make it to a six and that's gonna make it to an eight. Therefore this one is a value eight. And that applies to all the different cities. So this is gonna be a dynamic thing where the more connections, the more valuable that location is going to be. Now the value relates to how much money you're going to get at the end of that you know, admin phase or during the admin phase. So you're gonna calculate all of the values of the cities on those autobahns. Then you're gonna divide them up to who's sitting on those council benches. So without doing the maths here, you can add up all those figures and divide them. You know, The blue player here is gonna get three quarters of that money and this player here is only gonna get one quarter of that money. And after you've worked out all the money you're gonna get from the benches here, you're gonna have a look at your personal route card that you're allocated at the beginning of the game, um, which relates to a specific route here. So you can see that mine is to get to Dortmund to to Basel here, so Basel is here and Dortmund is all the way up here. And then basically for each road section, you're gonna add on a point for, however you're gonna reduce a point for every autobahn and every service station on that route. So the idea is you want to be getting to as low a figure as possible because the lower figure you have, it means you're gonna get more bonuses. So let's just say I ended up having every single road being a dual carriageway and having loads of service stations and I got to a value zero here. Therefore, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get to promote somebody, I'm gonna get 20 coins and I'm gonna to get to promote somebody else. And during the third and final phase of the game, these roadblocks are going to be removed, meaning that East Germany is gonna be available to play and gonna introduce this brand new autobahn representing the fall of the Berlin Wall. Okay, so that's a very brief overview of the rules of Autobahn. Now let's go into some personal thoughts on the game. And we're gonna start with some of the key mechanisms here, starting with the color coding hand management system here. Now in theory, I think this is a very neat idea. I like that restrictive nature of, yeah, I wanna do something with my white card. Maybe I wanna build a white service station because I think that there's a route there that loads of people are gonna pass by and I wanna get all that very juicy passive income there. But it means that once I've committed here with my white card, I'm not gonna be able to you know, upgrade a white autobahn. I'm not gonna be able to build any new road on the white autobahn and so on. So again, I like that having to forsake one thing to do another. But in theory, it actually does make the game feel very slow because I'm, I'm gonna to have to waste a whole turn to pick all my cards back into my hand and um, 
to be able to redeploy that card again. Yes, I understand that's a pivotal part of the game, but when ultimately your strategy, I suppose, is linked to your root card, which will generally tie to... Um, to one or two auto barns because you know you want to keep on building the same one and build a quick route there. Um, it means that you're going to have to keep on using those cards and you're just going to be in a position where you're not going to want to keep on playing a card, picking it up, playing it, playing up, playing a card, picking it up and playing it again. It just feels like you're going through the motions at times and it would be cool to have you know several colors of the same types. And that even relates to the actual number of cards you can play in each place anyway because yes, I want to build some you know, some service stations. However, I can only ever build one. So it's like, well, I'm going to have to pick all my cards again to just to build another service station. So again, it just feels very slow in its nature. And that also applies to the way that the trucks move around the map. Yes, that's also color coded. And I like the fact that it's not actually related to the truck action. So no matter when, what action you take, as long as you're playing that colored card, you can move your truck if it's on that autobahn. But again, normally you want to go kind of a key route there, especially earlier in the game. You want to be, you know, flying down the black autobahn, for example, but you've already committed your black card. Therefore, you can't do it again until you pick up your trucks. Now, this should be dynamic. It should be a free flowing thing just in its nature. It should be making deliveries left, right and center, but it just takes a long time to get things moving. And it feels like you're pulling teeth at times. Now, that being said, I do actually like the way that when the game develops and there's more and more roads being built, you can quite strategically start maneuvering your trucks around. Like, for example, if you played, say, a black, um, a black card and then you move it a couple of spaces and then move it quickly onto this colored autobahn and then you play that card in your next action and you start moving onto this autobahn. So you can actually start stringing your moves together and strategically planning the logistics of your truck to get the most moves out of it. So yeah, I do like that, but again, particularly early in the game, it just feels like you're really dragging your heels with those trucks. Now, I do like the fact that it is kind of counteracted by the fact that one of the upgrades is to bring a second second truck into play which i definitely think is worth doing because you know the more actions you're going to take it means the um you know the more movements you're going to get and you're not going to be wasting so much time there so let's move on to this offices and administration part of the game. So I do actually quite like this conflicting mechanism of wanting to have people on these seats because when that admin phase hits, that's potentially a lot of money to be had there if you are dominating you know, one of these benches with a powerful autobahn with all those valuable cities there. Um, but in contrast, if they're sat here, you're not going to be able to be in a position to promote them to the other officer spaces here. Now, again, that's in theory, but in practice, um, people are just going to be going about their business and passively they're going to start removing you from there and moving you into the lobby. Now, I always found that you've always got plenty of people just sat there doing nothing because especially during the first, you know, two thirds of the game, there's not that much opportunity to promote people because generally you'll be promoting people in the third and final act when um, you can start delivering these pharmaceuticals to these um, different locations. So it feels like there's a lot of stagnant parts of the game here where they're just sat here not doing much. Yes, they're going to be worth two points each, but it doesn't really feel that rewarding, especially the amount of hoops you have to jump through to get them there in the first place. I also wanted to touch on another problem I had with the game, and that was the flow of money or coins in this one. Um, it really did feel like money was way too easy to come by. Not once did I struggle to pay for any single action I wanted to do. It really did always go back to how many cards I had and um, how many action spaces had already been taken. So yeah, the cards were the restriction, not the cash at all. And considering cash is a big part of this game, because that's why you're actually building the autobahns and getting on these seats in the first place, it felt somewhat inconsequential. So yeah, I would have liked to have seen it being a bit tighter in that respect. And again, not always being able to do whatever I wanted at any time. I thought there were some very strange choices made here from a mechanical standpoint. The first of which is how that money gets allocated to the players during the admin phases by adding up all those cities and dividing them up equally to the people on the bench there. Just seems like it was jumping through a lot of hoops and it could have been made way more streamlined by having a fixed amount. And maybe even ramping that amount up depending on the phase you're in. I thought that maintaining the values of the cities was a little bit confusing and not totally intuitive because it's not actually the amount of cities they're connecting to, but it's having at least one city on each autobahn. Just again, more fiddly rules minutiae there. 
Um, especially I thought that this part of the game here with these um, root cards was an absolute cluster. So difficult to explain by you know trying to get to value zero, but each road counting as one, but reducing one for each um, dual carriageway and service station you have there. Just an absolute, just yeah, mind bending on the way this worked. It could have been so much more simple. And again, this was not gelling with anybody I was teaching. You know, I teach a lot of games and I like to think I'm pretty good at it. But this just did not resonate with the players at all. And I also thought there were some weird balance things as well. Like if people passed through your um, your service stations, that would have been a really cool part of the game. And it would have been really like a cool decision if people had to make that decision of, am I going to go past the service station or am I going to divert around it? But in reality, you're only getting like a couple of coins if you do so, which is next to nothing considering how much money you have in the game anyway. So yeah, just some weird choices here, a bit of imbalance and just some things just didn't quite sit right. I really do feel the game could have benefited from having some decent player aids. And um, there's a lot of times in this game where we forgot to do certain things. Like, for example, we forgot some of the upgrades that we already bought. I know this is kind of a, a general um, critique there, and it happens to a lot of games. But for some reason, it happened more in this game than any other one. And um, we just forgot, yeah, forgot things we unlocked and forgot to use these powers. And forgot that we could use some of these upgrades here. Um, sometimes you forget to put people on the council. You think, oh, did I do that or did I not do that? Yeah, just lots of little niggly steps there that get in the way of the fun. I must admit that I was not a fan of how all the points are allocated at the end of the game. It felt like there wasn't enough incentive or enough to motivate you through the duration of the actual gameplay itself. It would have been nice if you got points by you know, building the autobahns as you went. Because, you know, although you get points by having people on the councils and then hope, hopefully getting the bigger multipliers there, it felt like, well, this state of play is always changing and those points aren't going to be in the bank. So, again, too, too dynamic there and too temporary rather than, you know, I put all this work in, I spent all this money and all this time and effort. I should be getting points for doing that. I feel like the game takes way too long to play. I mean, yes, the box does say an hour and a half to two hours, which I don't think is completely unrealistic if you're familiar with the game. But my problem is with the engagement. I felt like after those first two phases of the game are finished, I'm ready. I'm ready for the game to be over with. I don't want to play a whole new third of the game before the game comes to an end. The player interaction in the game is relatively minor. I've already touched on the service stops here. Um, it, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. Who cares if you pass by somebody's service stop? You're going to give them a couple of coins. Let them let them have it. So be it. It's not really going to affect your game. There's a little bit of jockeying position for the um, officers here, especially when you know an admin phase is coming up and you want your big share of the money there. But generally, if you're not in one seat, you're probably going to be in another one. So, you know, it's generally going to balance out somewhat equally. The game does scale pretty well. There's going to be more or fewer bonus tokens depending on you know, the player count there. The same applies to the office seats here. So again, you're going to get the full experience no matter who you play with or how many people you play with. Let's quickly talk about the production choices here. I actually think the game looks really cool when it's set up. Um, I like the way the board looks. I like the way the offices look, etc. And the player boards are pretty decent. You know, I've got no issue with them at all. There are a few little production issues in terms of some of these tokens being very small and fiddly to play with. And moving your trucks around the map can be a bit fiddly as well because the goods don't fit in nice and snug. They actually do just loosely lean on the back there. The roads are a bit too small for the truck so they don't quite sit on nicely either so yeah a mixed bag here generally i like it i like the wooden pieces they look really cool nice and bright and vibrant but yeah the roads themselves are a little bit small and fiddly etc and um, the board can become a little bit convoluted once you start getting the roads um you know the different types of roads the tokens the lorries etc just just a little bit busy there but still minor critique i actually generally do like the way it's produced and put together Okay, so let's share some final thoughts on Autobahn. So it goes without saying, really, I did not enjoy this game one bit, which was a huge surprise for me, considering that the designers here are Lopiano and Mangone. They made some fantastically beautiful, elegant games, such as Kalamala and Newton, you know, amongst my favourite games of all time. This is just pulled apart two designs like that. It's fiddly, it's convoluted, it's busy, it's confusing, very unintuitive in the way everything comes together. And it just feels like you're jumping through a lot of hoops without really getting anywhere. The money is just flows too 
too easily. You can always do what you want. The card management is just frustrating rather than, you know, puzzly and taxing. It's just annoying, if anything. Um, the cards that you could upgrade with didn't come into play enough. Everything just took too long, you know, to move your trucks around. And yeah, I just did not enjoy the experience one bit, which as I said, this is generally my cup of tea. You know, I like economic games. Um, you know, Euros are my forte. Um, I play tons of them. And this one just did not work at all when I was expecting it to be so good. So yeah, too much work and too much effort needs to go into this one for very little dividends back. You know, you can play games that are so much more simple than this, that offer tougher choices and just are more fun. And ultimately, this game was not fun for me, which is really sad to say because I was very much looking forward to this one. So it goes without saying that I'm not going to recommend this one. You know, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. You know, I'm very experienced when it comes to games like this, and I'm, I'm not going to look at playing this one anymore. Um, very sadly, actually, because I like the theme, I like the setting, I love the designers, I like some of the choices here but um yeah the execution was just way off me and just not what i'm looking for anymore so those are my final thoughts on autobahn <laughs>